Hello there, dear guys and girls. Yes, there is a different backdrop. I am up in the forest where I'm enjoying a week just uh, relaxing and recharging batteries. And I've been reading a lot and I've been writing a lot. So uh, this is one of the aspects of self-care as well. So for those of you who ask, what can I do with self-care? This is one of them. You know, if you can just plan a mini break for a weekend or for a week and just get away, be in nature, it's, it's wonderful. And it really is beautiful out here. You know, there's, there's a lot of water. There's I'm in the middle of the forest. There's silence. I love the silence. And uh, I believe I'm the only one making noise at this point. You know, the rest of the park is very silent. And um, it's just beautiful. So if you get the chance then uh, plan a mini break for yourself. I'm going to make a point of doing that myself every single month if I can. And my uh, headset has broken. Um, since I came here, it worked for a day and then it just broke down. I think I've been using it too much. So I, uh, if, if the audio is bad, then uh, please bear with me. Uh, I don't have a chance to get a new one now, but I will as soon as I get home. So I apologize for the, um, for the bad audio. Today, I just wanted to quickly touch on uh, <laughs> the crying of the narcissist, the waterworks, you know, and I think this is something that we have all experienced um, at some time or other with a narcissist and usually with the covert narcissist is that they will turn on the waterworks, use those huge crocodile tears to gain your sympathy. And while they are doing this, they are convincing themselves and they are convincing you that they are the victim, that they have no one who loves them, no one who cares about them, that you saw things the wrong way in the relationship and that it was really never their intention to hurt you. So in romantic relationships, I remember I went through this about nine times. You know, I left that toxic uh, an abusive relationship nine times before finally um, and completely stepping away is because every time I would leave, uh, he would come back on his knees, be crying, those huge crocodile tears, pleading, um, saying, or, or playing, really playing that sympathy card. The victim card is what they play. And add to that the crocodile tears and the sobbing, you know, that's another thing where they are such excellent actors. The sobbing and the red eyes and the, <laughs> the mucus dripping out of their nose, ew, um, really gets you to think that you are dealing with someone who is so sincere in their apology and so sincere about wanting to make things work. But again, nothing is further from the truth. So this is something that you have to be aware of. And I realize, especially, you know, for codependents, for empaths, um, when the narcissist or toxic person in our lives uh, uses the waterworks, uses the tears, the crocodile tears to play on our emotions, we fall for that every single time because we are coming from a place of sincerity and it's not... It's not being arrogant, but it is the truth. We do come from a place of sincerity and we are looking to make the relationship work. We are looking to see where our faults are. And in doing so, we are also trying to help the narcissist in recognizing their faults and dealing with those faults, uh, correcting them so that you and I can move together with the toxic person, move and find a way to, to repair the re relationship and to have a healthy bond with each other. But this, of course, never works. So the narcissists themselves will call out abuse and abuse and say that you are abusing them. You know, if, if the tears don't work, the crocodile tears, um, pleading with you, please come back. If that doesn't work, then they will flip things around and say that they are being abused by you. And they will say to whoever wants to listen. It could be friends, it could be family, it could be your co-workers. Whoever will listen to them, they will make out that they are the ones who have been abused uh, for the whole relationship. 
So when you poke at their injury, you know, whether you confront them, whether you call them out on their bad behavior, whether you demand an explanation for certain things, you have then touched a narcissistic injury. And they will not take responsibility for this. They rather turn on the waterworks and uh, plead uh, victimhood than take responsibility for their part of the breakdown of the relationship or for the abuse that they have inflicted on you. And again, I absolutely believe that the narcissist knows what they are doing. They know when they are abusing us. So when, when someone knows that they are abusing you and they are doing things to hurt you, it is their responsibility to correct things. The same as with us, when we are doing things that are just not right, that are not healthy, that do not contribute to a healthy relationship or friendship, that is our responsibility to correct that. But this is something that the narcissist will never do. So what might uh, happen is that you go about uh, comforting them when you see those crocodile tears, when the word of waterworks are turned on, you will probably go about comforting them, trying to see their point of view, um, trying to make excuses for them. And really what you, what you and I are doing is just blowing smoke up their backsides. That is all we are doing because this gives them a, an ego hit. Their ego is then being uh, boosted again. Uh, they feel superior as soon as you start apologizing and comforting, comforting them. Um, this is when you will be stroking their ego again. And this also allows them to come back into the relationship and further abuse you. So stop blowing smoke up their backsides. It's just not, it's not healthy, it's not productive, and it is not helpful for you as the target, as the empath, or as the codependent. If you leave, as I was just saying, they will go about playing the victim, calling your friends, your family, crying to your friends and family as well about how sorry they are and how they want to repair things, but you are not allowing them to repair things, um, that they will flip it around and be such a convincing victim that even your friends and family will come to you and say, look, why don't you give him or her a second chance? Talk things through. Um, talk to your pastor. Talk to someone who you can confide in. Try and work this out. Go for relationship therapy. You know, this is how convincing these bloody crocodile tears are of them. It's just, it's ridiculous. And I fell for it, you know, not only in the romantic relationship with uh, um, the, the uh, narcissistic ex-boyfriend, but also in friendships where these women, these very toxic women would be sobbing their hearts out and, and you know, just crying themselves a river. And of course, this touches our heart space and we think, oh, they are so sincere. They are so willing to work things out. So we will go back in and try and repair things. Do not do this, especially when you see a pattern forming. You know, if you are involved with a toxic person and this happens once or twice where they're really sorry, they cry, they repair things and everything is okay, then of course, you know, that is the way to go if you're really valuing the friendship or relationship. But when you see a pattern forming, a pattern of victimhood, a pattern of turning the waterworks on, a pattern of, of um, crying and being so vulnerable, supposedly uh, uh, vulnerable, um, then that is a huge red flag. When you recognize the pattern, a pattern of destructive behavior, a pattern of trying to guilt trip you, trying to shame you into feeling sympathy towards them, then that is a huge red flag flag. So do not be swayed. Um, cling on to your independence. When you show that independence, that is when the narcissist will highlight their, uh, their being a victim and they will downplay your feelings and emotions. So when you see this happening, cling on to your independence. Move back from that relationship. Move away from it. There is no need for you to stay in these very toxic relationships 
and just be aware of your sincerity and what the narcissist is really trying to do because you will know by trusting your gut instinct and by recognizing the patterns of abuse, the patterns of destructive behavior, that is when you know that you must step away and secure yourself. So do not fall for the crocodile tears. Those tears that fall, you know, it's it's like they, they sort of flip a switch, they turn on a switch when they see that you are making steps to lead them or, or that you are being coming becoming aware of their behavior. They will flip that switch and let the tears fall. Um, I've seen it again with an ex-lover. I've seen it with ex, uh, with narcissistic ex-friends. I've seen it with my own narcissistic mother-in-law, where it could just be turned on and off. Those waterworks. Excuse me, I'm stuttering here. So they just turn them on and off. And you know, if you are really sincere, that is something. Or if the other person is being sincere. That is something that you will just feel. That is your intuition speaking to you. But when you wonder, should I believe them or should I not believe them? That in itself is another warning sign. So no waterworks. Do not tolerate them and do not be bullied um, into having that fake sympathy. It really is fake because when someone is not being sincere with you, then you are not really not giving any sincerity back. There is no exchange of sincerity. It is a one-way street. So I, um, I hope that helps some. Um, take care of yourselves and uh, speak to you all very soon. I'm going to go out for a long forest walk right now. Bye for now. Speak to you all next time.